Hi everyone, welcome to this episode. It's gonna be a van tour of this Citroen Relay L3H2 behind me, which is one of our Kunu models. It's called Dandelion. It's our most recent conversion, and there's some really cool features that we like about this van. So starting on the outside, you can see they've got the BF Goodrich all-terrain tires um, and the Rogue Alloys um, MSW 48s. On the back of the van, we've got the spare wheel on a wheelie Am's spare wheel carrier. We've also used the Raptor paint to create a skirt on this van. And this is the first time we've, we've done this and we think it gives a really nice, aggressive, rugged look. Um, and it was a really good product to work with. On the roof of this van, we've got a 540 watt rigid frame solar panel. This will enable the van to be off grid for longer periods of time compared to our standard 360 watt panel. We have added a, an awning from Thule, which extends outwards about two and a half meters. And we like to have the legs fixed onto the van, but you can temp peg them um, to the ground as well. This is a really nice awning. It, it's a manual wind out, but you can buy accessories such as side panels and front panels. On the roof, we've also got a max air fan, which is something we put into all of our conversions. It provides permanent ventilation and can be used as an extractor when you're cooking or can blow cool air from outside into the van when it's hot. We have a, a 5G ready antenna on the roof from motorhome Wi-Fi, and this connects into a MiFi router in the garage space. There's also an electric step that winds in automatically when the ignition feed is started. So when you switch on your engine, the step automatically retracts inside. We also have the tanks underneath. So we've got the insulated fresh and wastewater. It's an 83 litre fresh and a 62 litre waste. The fresh has a heat element for cold weather and they both have a drain down tap on the outside for when you need to winterize the van. So let's open up the door and have a look inside. You can see our Kunu layout, obviously with the shower cubicle behind the driver's seat. One recent change that we've made to the shower cubicle is to add uh, an angle on this corner here. Um, we've also matched that with the box seat by adding this 45 cutaway. And what that enables is a lot more space. Uh, so there's less of a bottleneck between the shower cubicle and the box seat. Got a single passenger seat uh, with the swivel and they've also opted for an additional uh, leg which mounts just on this B pillar here so that when they're swiveled round um, they can put their laptop on their table and work with a lovely view out the, out the van door. Um, underneath we've got a bit of storage in this step here so you've got two little compartments storing tinned goods or any little bits that you want to. Up high we've got a little light for the awning, turns that on and off and then the step remote just up here. Behind the driver's seat is a curtain. It pulls across, gives you a blackout during the evening. And then behind the driver's seat, there's some storage for your dining table uh, and your spare table for the passenger seat. Above the parcel shelf, you've got a nice area for storage. We've got this lovely walnut trim, um, American black walnut and American black walnut ceiling slats as well. First time we've put a walnut on the actual slats, we normally use a pine that we stain, and this gives a really nice um, quality finish, um, and that's just uh, rubbed down and oiled with Danish oil. Inside the shower cubicle, you can see nice art, large open space. We've got a nature's head toilet that is secured this composting toilet is really efficient. Uh, it separates the solids and the liquids. And if you're in the van for long periods of time, um, then a composting loo is, is preferable. So you're not having to uh, go back to campsites uh, to empty your chemical toilets and things like that. So yeah, this one is really popular with our customers who live in their vans and travel for long periods of time. Uh, normal domestic mi mixer shower in chrome and a couple of storage solution so you can hang items of clothing or towels up in here um, and coupled with the heat vent down in the bottom corner uh, this area becomes a bit of a drying room so wetsuits and towels you can hang up put your heating on and they'll dry out nicely and um, with the skylight in the roof to allow for ventilation and then we've got a small cubby hole up here where you can put things like towels toilet rolls shower gels all the sorts uh, we've got a white gloss finished on the walls 
with some tiles down low and the tiles down low uh, match the kitchen splashback. This van's called Dandelion and the tiles feature Dandelion on them. Uh, you've got a full length mirror on the shower door and a couple of hooks um, for your dressing gowns. Low level lighting, you can see a little switch down here, turns that on and off. And there's a small LPG alarm down here. And there's also a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. Uh, and that couples with the Total Cool Air, cool air Blower. Um, obviously we haven't got air corn in this conversion um, because of the power draw, but we have got a cool air blower. So our recommendation for that is in the hot weather, have a bottle of water in your fridge um, so it's at four degrees and then when you need to use the cool air blower you simply um, use that water in the actual system and it will, it will a fan will be generating cold air blowing throughout the van so yeah um, first time we've put one of them in, in in a van but we think they look really good and moving back we've got overheads above the kitchen unit and you can see in two of these overheads the customer has asked for us to put in a, a shelf so we've got a walnut um, fronted a uh, little divider shelf here so you can put your mugs up top and your plates and crockery um, below these are all on gas struts and blum hinges so you can remove the doors um, and this third overhead cupboard features our control panel we've got the truma combi d4e which is the diesel uh, boiler really nice piece of kit um, and enables you to sort of tap into the vehicle fuel tank uh, for the fuel source so you're not having to find LPG filler points um, too frequently. The battery monitor here is the Vitron 712. Um, really important to monitor your electrical usage inside the vans um, as you're trying to remain off grid. So you want your power in to be greater than your power out. Um, hence why we've increased the solar panel on the roof to a 540 watt. We have also added a second Orion DC to DC charger. So when this van is driving, it will be generating 60 amps of charge into a 320 amp hour lithium battery from Roma. So quite a lot of capacity there um, to go off grid. We've also got the LPG tank switch. So we've got an electric solenoid um, on the tank itself. So you don't have to crawl under the van to shut off the bottle. Um, this is simply turned on and off by a rocker switch and you've got a level gauge above there to let you know when your LPG tank's running low. And below the tank switch, we've got a water tank heating element switch. So in cold weather, you switch this on and the fresh water tank has a heat element inside to prevent it from freezing. Again, your battery monitor, you can toggle through the, the options um, and work out if your power out is more than your power in and then you can start turning items off to um, remain off grid things like that underneath these units we've got touch sensitive down lights really nice feature to illuminate the work surface and the worktop features two spice rack shelves again finished in a walnut with the 45 angle put onto those uh, we've also trimmed in walnut the kitchen wall itself. We have our undermounted sink with the sink inserts. Really like these because they allow you to have a lot of worktop space for prep and then you've got a nice deep sink um, when you need to do your washing up. So yeah, really happy with that. This is the Thetford Triplex. We put these in most of our conversions that have LPG. Three burners on the top, an oven and a grill for cooking pizzas, cheese on toast, croissants um, so that's a really handy um, cooker in the kitchen unit you've got your cutlery drawer here with walnut dividers and these are all on brand new soft close drawer runners which are really nice these are mounted from underneath rather than from the side there's more adjustment on the actual runners itself so that's the pots and pans drawer um, and again you've got another drawer um, there which is nice and soft close. You've got a bin cupboard underneath the cutlery drawer with a, a decent sized bin. Um, the vent fan for the toilet actually goes behind here. You can see that ventilation fan connects to the toilet 
and goes out the back of the out the bottom of the van and we've got heating ducts running into the shower cubicle and into the living space from the Truma boiler you've got your storage underneath your sink your filter from your cold water feed in this bottom unit here is your Truma combi boiler you've got the sign there and this states that the boiler must be drained down if left unoccupied in cold temperatures basically if there's cold temperatures and the boiler is going to freeze you want to drain down the system so drain all the water out of the pipework you do this by twisting a lever on a drain down valve you can see your boiler nicely fitted under under there uh, and the actual shelf above that shelf is removable so you can have access for maintenance in the future we have got a, a drawer here above the fridge and the actual fridge itself you can see an 80 litre fridge with a small freezer area inside as well you can position the table using the lagoon leg next to the kitchen unit if you need extra prep space i really like the lagoon legs for versatility uh, it provides a nice table there as well you can see we've got a fixed box seat and a movable box seat uh, these bolt together when you're driving got a bolt through the floor and some cabin hooks as well um, and inside there's a lot of storage fire extinguisher and fire blanket Next to the table leg, you can see the inverter switch here. This now powers the double socket above and the double socket on the kitchen unit to produce 230 volts at up to 3000 watt inverter. Around the bed area, you've got a nice little cubby shelf um, next to the overheads, the remote for your Max fan, a couple of reading lights, which are touch sensitive. Turn them on off just by touching. And then they've got a USB underneath for charging. Here's one and two. You've got the Max fan above the bed space here. Again, that's got a blackout blind from the Max shade, so you can make sure that you're not going to get woken up from the morning sun. And then by the back door, you've got a couple of windows, and then the curtains can pull across uh, to provide you that blackout at night. Recesses at the head and foot of the bed. So this is a standard double mattress, standard double duvet set. And then above the foot of the bed, you've got these three overheads. I think these two have got shelves in as well. Your customer requests to put the shelves in. Those two there for their clothes. And then on the near side wall, you've got your main light switch here. And then this is your 12 volt control panel so you can turn all your 12 volt circuits on and off your water pump on and off your water tank level and then you, you can check your vehicle battery status as well carbon monoxide alarm and double usb socket here again with another little shelf let's have a look at the sliding door so all of our door cards we put on screw caps just so that they are removable if there is ever an issue with any of the mechanical systems behind, like the locks. So if you need to replace a locking mechanism, you can remove that panel uh, as a single unit. We have a blackout blind with a couple of bits of a palmet and some side profiles as well, just to prevent any light from creeping through. So we look this is down. You can see obviously once it's down, those side profiles just prevent light from getting into the van and you've got a little nice uh, window sill at the bottom again in walnut to match so let's have a look round into the garage i'll just quit one on the side of the van backup charger here you hook up in the winter months if your solar yields are down then you might want to plug in um, to recharge your leisure batteries on the back of the van you've got your bf goodrich tire and your wheel carrier. Lots of space in the garage of the Kunu. Got your electrics housed on the near side here. And you can see, oh, just a light to the garage up here. And that's on a little rocker as well. Battery box has got a 320 amp hour lithium battery from Roma. And you can see in there, the main switch, your fuses, and your bus bars, a couple of relays in there as well. Um, one relay for the water 
water heat tank and the other relay to um, activate the DC DC when you're driving um, so that you're not sort of putting a, a lead acid charge profile from the sergeant into your lithium batteries. So second relay there, which works with the, the sergeant consumer unit. Um, obviously the solar charge controller is your primary charger um, from the 540 watt panel on the roof. Uh, this is slightly uprated to a 100 volt 50 amp charger um, so that's what it can um, go up to in terms of the panel um, output We've got a double pole isolator switch below just to disconnect both the line and the neutral conductors of the solar panel and underneath that we've got a 240 volt changeover switch so this changeover switch just is used when you go from off-grid mode which is uh, number one with the inverter to hookup mode so essentially all the sockets like this one here and the two in the living space will be powered by whatever supply you choose on this changeover switch this is the sergeant consumer unit a 155 and that has a 12 volt fuse board on one side and a 230 volt uh, breaker board on the other side protected by an rcd and three mcbs a 10 amp 10 amp and a 6 amp it's all labelled up and next to the consumer unit we've got the leisure battery charger which is your um, electric hookup mains charger. Uh, you've got a motorhome Wi-Fi router uh, with the antenna on the roof, a smoke alarm, two DC to DC chargers like I mentioned uprated so that you have 60 amps going into the batteries when you're driving and this is your inverter. Um, here and obviously it's in the off position but we've got the remote switched on which is why the green light is on and that's your battery one thing i like to do on all my installs is just put an installation date on the actual battery itself just helps uh, future uh, maintenance they can obviously look at the age of the battery to help diagnose any issues if there are any down the line on the off side of the garage we have got the vehicle jack bungeed in Obviously that's been removed from the passenger seat just because the lowered seat base doesn't allow that to sit underneath that space anymore. So it's in the garage. Got the boilers isolation switch. So that's the Truma. Obviously isolated and not isolated. When you connect to a, a hookup, you can obviously have the boiler running off of 230 volt. And then in here we've got your main hookup cable with a three pin plug adapter. You've also got an external shower point and a heat vent to warm the garage space. Just looking at the external shower point, you can see I've connected one end into the actual outlet. The other end's a trigger hose. And that just has hot or cold water. You can spray that just to wash down your boots or any muddy dogs after a walk. So that concludes the tour of this van, Dandelion. I hope you enjoyed uh, everything that's inside and what went into it. So please like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more van tours like this and other useful tips and tricks for anyone building a van themselves and see you next time.